Hello everyone, welcome back to all of you in the Smelly Army. So something slightly different for the intro today, we're going to be having a look at negative reviews on bass notes. I know Lex Ellis has done a similar thing with Fragrantica and bass notes reviews that he found amusing. I'm going to focus here on one reviewer at a time on bass notes and pick out some of the more negative reviews with the, the, the most amusing ways of negatively describing fragrances. I find this fun. I know negative reviews are always, there's something compelling about reading them whenever I go on holiday. I want to read the TripAdvisor negative reviews of where I'm going. I'm just that way. So here we go. This gentleman is called Two Nosed Twin. And here's one of his best ones to start with. So uh, this is Silver Black Onyx by Azaro. Sharp anisic lavender package in a wool-like softness. Dark bitter tones with a puff of smoke and slightly urinic animalic undertones. Strong green herbal. Hot peppery metallic. Coumarin times 10. Fresh sweat soapiness. Colour gunmetal. Freshness sharp as glass mossy terpenic pine needles cedarwood musky powdery little refinement blasting at high volume quickly bores cheap verdict atomic stink bomb next up very irresistible for men fresh attitude by Givenchy follows every cliche there is to find on modern masculine scents but can't be called a perfume maybe they thought that by blending basil and coffee they somehow could recreate the angel effect but it surely doesn't work a first class stinker Amour pour homme by Cacherelle. Some dracar noir, some caractère, but brings nothing by itself. An aquatic spiced woody scent that's just an insult to perfumery. Light blue by Dolce & Gabbana. Horrendously bad fragrance, not even worth discussing, but I do anyway, for the sake of humanity. Light blue is the stinker of all stinkers. Hello everyone, welcome back to all of you in the Smelly Army. So we've got some fragrances from a new fragrance house today that I'm really excited to introduce to you, my viewers. Uh, the fragrance house is called Happy Land Studio. They're based in America. They've sent me these fragrances free for review about a month and a half ago, and I've now decided they are definitely worth sharing with my viewers, particularly a couple of them that I've really fallen for. Don't forget, if you're interested, you can join up to the Mr. Smelly Private Members Club over on Patreon, where for just $2 a month you get an extra video every week. There's a link in the description to sign up. I hope to see you there. So let's get stuck into it. Um, so the, the house is run by a gentleman, the perfumer, called E.J. Wells. Uh, now, he has got a range, I think, so far of four fragrances that are available. The first one, which uh, you'll understand why it's on my channel, because it's called Barbershop, one of my favourite styles of fragrances. Uh, another one that is out there is called Blue Fire. And the third one that I've got the proper bottle of is called Happy Land Signature. And he also sent me a pre-release sample of one called Plum Loco. I like all of them, but I'm going to focus on the two that excited me most today. Uh, the ones that I'm leaving out so far, uh, Blue Fire is a kind of tea herbal fragrance with a, a bit of a citrus freshness about it as well. Uh, very pleasant, but I'm still getting to know that one. And Plum Loco, I haven't had time really to spend a lot of time uh, wearing. But the other two I'm really excited about. The company have very kindly agreed to do a giveaway of two 50ml bottles to two lucky viewers in the USA, USA only I'm afraid, so if you're interested to be included and you're in the USA, just say count me in in your comment below and uh, we'll try and draw the winner real soon and let you know who won. Also they've given me a discount code for anyone who orders on their website and that's smelly20, it gives you 20% off all their fragrances. First thing to notice about them is they are beast mode, the performance on both of these exceedingly strong. Uh, the bottles, I actually really like the design. I know the bottle itself is a fairly generic type of bottle, but I think the labels look really good. It's kind of a, well, what do you call that? Steampunk, slightly retro kind of vibe, bit of a shaving barbershop vibe about the whole picture that they've got going on there. And I would therefore, let's, uh, that leads me seamlessly to the first one that I want to talk about. So, Happy Land Studio Barbershop. Of course, uh, as you know, if you follow my channel, I really like barbershop style fragrances. What is a barbershop fragrance? What does this mean? Uh, well, it's difficult to say exactly, actually. Uh, it's, it tends to be the type of fragrance that might be smelled in a barbershop in the old days, maybe, or even up till today. Uh, there are things like uh, Peanard Clubman in the USA, or perhaps Brute by Fabergé here in the UK that the barbers do still have in some barber shops, and they spray on your neck. And they tend to be uh, masculine, kind of soapy, fresh fougere fragrances. Uh, and then now we have much more expensive versions of that kind of genre, aromatic fougere type fragrances, things like Paco Rabanne, Pour Homme from the 70s, um, Azaro, Pour Homme, are generally regarded as barbershop fragrances 
fragrances, but it's a little bit confusing. Generally, uh, you're going to have a smell that is fresh, clean and masculine, probably a lot of lavender in there, possibly some oak moss and tonka type accords, and it might smell a little bit reminiscent of shaving foam and that kind of thing. So it's a very manly, yet fresh and clean and well-groomed type of scent. And uh, as I say, one that I'm very much a big fan of. I, I like things like Rive Gauche Pour Homme from Yves Saint Laurent, uh, Invasion Bar Bar from MDCI Parfums, Milano Cento Him. And this is another one now from uh, Happy Land Studio that I think can take its rightful place as a really great and great performing barbershop style scent. Uh, so you get 50 mils of this on the website. I will link to their website below. They ship uh, in the, to the USA through the website. If you're elsewhere in the world, I'll put an email address below and you can contact them and they do ship to other countries too. The price for your 50 mil bottle here is $64.99. That translates, I think, to just over 50 pounds in UK money. I should have mentioned here that they also send you the solid version of the fragrance. That's a, a solid perfume, a kind of wax that you put on your skin as well as the bottle. You get that free with your purchase. Notes on this one then, uh, I found on the company's website a description, it wasn't an official note list, but they mentioned Ambroxan, Lavender, Musk, Leather, Pepper and Bitter Orange. And uh, so let's get stuck into how it smells. So I've got some on a card and it's a really beautiful, um, very rich and pungent masculine fougere type fragrance. Um, it really for me focuses more on the shaving cream and the lavender and the kind of, um, what's the word, the, the sort of rich and warming elements of the barbershop genre rather than some others where there's perhaps more of a, a piney green opening. Uh, this doesn't have much of a kind of citrus or green piney feel. There. It does have this kind of smooth leathery undertone and a very strong kind of masculine warming aura. It reminds me a little bit of things like Fougere Royale from Hubigant, uh, the aforementioned Milan or Shento Him, which I really like. Uh, but it's even more in your face than either of those. It's it's quite strong right in the opening. Even I would say when you first spray it, you might say I'm not. That's a bit much. It's very in your face. But after about ten minutes, that dries down to this beautiful kind of herbaceous aromatic scent. It, it must have more in it than the notes officially listed. It, it's got these kind of herbal green leafy tones in there a little bit. Things like clary sage, things like basil might be in there, rosemary. It's difficult to make out exactly what's gone into this but it gives this overall feeling of a very masculine shaving cream-esque type of smell. Quite a bit of lavender in there and things like the ambroxan probably adding to the longevity and keeping it from smelling very very old school. It, it doesn't smell like a seven fragrance exactly perhaps more in tune with the uh, modern niche type fougere barbershop scents and the ones that I've mentioned earlier I think that, that kind of things so it's not going to smell really really dated but it does have a slight retro vibe and the performance is the other thing that has really impressed me beware with this one the sprayer pumps out a lot of juice let's show that Wow, and um, yeah, it stays on the skin. You're obviously getting a lot of fragrance on you each time you do spray it, and it stays on the skin and on clothing for ages. It's pretty much nuclear beast mode performance, right up my street, really enjoy it. I think the price is pretty good. It's an original release from a new small indie type fragrance house, and definitely check these guys out, I'm impressed. Moving on then, the other one of the ones they sent me that really captured my imagination, although it's not really normally my type of thing, is called Happy Land Signature. Now I think that EJ Wells, the man behind the company, is a bit of a fan of gourmands, and I think he's rather keen on the tobacco note in fragrances, and that's exactly what we get with Happy Land Signature, so a totally different kettle of fish here. Uh, same price for this 50 mil, $64.99, they describe it on the website as as nearly gourmand and the notes are simply listed as tobacco honey blueberries and apple pie so that's not I'm not massively into gourmands all the time but if you watch me regularly you will know that I do have a little bit of a partiality to an outright sweetness bomb this isn't quite that but it is very sweet um, so it has this really recognizable tobacco vanille from Tom Ford esque tobacco note that rich um, pungent kind of tobacco mixed with sweetness so there's definitely this kind of dried fruit accord that you also get in tobacco vanilla but it's much more of a gourmand leaning fragrance it st does smell a little bit like vanilla ice cream blueberries apple pie that kind of vibe very much in there and that really tempers the sort of um, the, the side of tobacco that might not be you know can be a bit too much if you just had a really strong tobacco smell that's not always pleasant but it really balances out the, t the tobacco leaf accord 
with this lovely creamy gourmand. It almost makes your mouth water and you imagine like a blueberry pie with some vanilla custard or something on it. And uh, I think, you know, really fun to wear. Probably going to be more for the colder weather, but before long, autumn will be upon us. And uh, the performance again, absolutely nuclear. I'll just show you the sprayer again, just because it's such fun massive sprays and uh, really sticks on your clothes for a long time lovely kind of dry down the development on both of these is not massive they're quite linear but I really like the smell at the beginning and the end uh, but this one definitely comes out quite strongly with the tobacco accord and then I get perhaps more of that kind of sweet vanilla thing as, as the predominant thing as it dries down which is no bad thing very very pleasant indeed so a really nice rich gourmand fragrance with great performance and I think in, in a nice price range there of around about a dollar per mil is or just a little bit over a dollar a pound per mil is about right for this fragrance house to come out with these great scents great performance really excited about them the other one blue fire i quite liked it but i haven't had enough time to tell you more and uh, plum loco again i've just had a couple of sniffs but i think it's rather a, a pungent and fruity sweet type of fragrance so maybe i'll mention that again on the channel uh, later on when i've had more time to try it out so excited to share a new house with you guys today they were sent to me free thank you very much to the company but the opinions that I gave were genuine on the downside um, well I yeah, should give you the pros and cons you could say the packaging is fairly basic in terms of the bottles and they didn't get a box with it so there's stuff there that they might want to improve on and the smells are very very pleasant but uh, I found them relatively linear they started out one way and, and didn't change massively so I give the pros and cons always but I really liked both of these and very proud to feature them on the show. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching. Whatever you're doing in life, let's project. See you next time. Bye-bye.